creativity as our, our, and innovation. Creativity is the thinking of something and creating of something new. Innovation is taking it to where it has some impact. Welcome to The Creators, here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday, extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by making, creators. making what you make. Today on The Creators, Dan Derby comes to photography after a career as a product designer, and he brings to his new field of photography an approach that he calls an image designer. So we invite you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up while you're gonna watch the show first. So let's get on with the show. Welcome back everybody to The Creators coming to you from some city in beautiful downtown <laughs> Summersworth, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm Tom Jackson and uh, I'm very happy to have with me here today uh, Dan Derby, who is uh, a magnificent photographer, and we're definitely going to give you the uh, the website to see his work. Um, but I, I, as we were talking uh, a little before the, the cameras started rolling, um, I noted that you said uh, you don't really think of yourself as a photographer or refer to yourself as No, I don't. Um, I am trained as a designer, a uh, product designer, so I'm kind of a gearhead. Um, but I'm not a technologist, and there's a difference there. But um, no, I, I think photographers are people who um, who are excel at capturing it at the at the moment. Uh, what Cartier-Bresson used to call them decisive moment. Um, for me, the process is far longer. I do as much creative work in post processing as I do in taking the picture. And so um, and, and so I tend to think of myself as an image designer, not a graphic designer or a video expert, and they're wonderful people at that. But just um, the image is a way to start the process, the captured image, and then the rest of it becomes trying to uh, extract and elicit and um, coalesce the, the idea that you had when you first started into the, uh, in my case, it's often a theater taking pictures of people doing um, rehearsals, which is uh, what I think uh, recommended me to you uh, in that right. sense. Um, uh, you mentioned Cartier-Bresson, and uh, I've noted that with other conversations with uh, you know very serious photographers, whether they refer to themselves as <laughs> photographers or not, that that he's cast an incredibly long shadow uh, oh, yeah. and uh, you know is such a, a big influence. Do you, do you consider him to be one of your bigger influences? I do, um, and and as as much as I'd love to emulate him, I can't. Um, in fact, what I'm doing is a kind of a secret emulation, if you will. He would. Um, he had two things that that are really unique. One is he was able to um, move in in street environments, in in public environments, like a ghost. He was just uh, there is there is very little uh, in the way of film of him working, but there is one, and he looks like a ballet dancer moving in and out of the crowds. It's a beautiful thing to watch. I recommend it um, to get an idea of what he did. And he also like. Uh, many innovators came to the field from someplace else. He was a watercolorist. And in fact, late in, later in life, he stopped, simply stopped taking pictures and went back to watercolor. Hmm. I think it was water. I'm fairly sure it was watercolor. Yeah. Um, and it's not uncommon to see innovators come from different environments and, and affect a field that they're new to. I think I've seen that clip that you're talking about. Uh, there's a couple of really good documentaries on Brisson out there, and I think one of them includes that clip that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So now we're getting into a little bit of, you know, we've gone from photographer and talking about innovators and so on. Uh, the show is called The Creators, and we uh, pretty routinely ask people who come on, uh, you know, 
do you consider yourself a creator uh, and uh, what, if anything, does that term mean to you? Hmm. Um, well, first of all, there's a difference between um, creativity as our, our, and innovation. Creativity is the thinking of something and creating of something new. Innovation is taking it to where it has some impact in the world. So I'm probably, at least in the work that we are talking around of mine, I'm, I'm probably more of a creator of, of something. I do projects that are intended to um, um, be serial rather than singular. I don't take a picture. I do a series. And so if you were to look on my website, you'd see multiple series with lots of pictures on them all of which are trying to refine it. So yeah, my, I probably am something of a creator of things, um, as designers are too. I noticed from looking at your website, there's, there's quite a uh, diversity in within the, the series context. You've got, as you mentioned before, the, the sort of backstage photos, mm -hmm. there's a number of uh, coastal photos and so on. What uh, can you talk about some of the the work that uh, people will find when they go to your website? Yeah, um, the website originally was a place that uh, clients could come and and that's all been moved to another location. Um, and I don't do commercial work any anymore, at least very rarely. Um, there is the a current series that I'm doing, which is called Backstage Backstory, and. Um, then there are a series of coastal oriented ones where um, I live within walking distance of the New Hampshire coast, all 12 miles of it. And so I, I w regularly have been down there with a camera. And in that process, one of the things I discovered is that um, at the time I was doing um, um, color work, the black and white um, made me see the whole coastal environment of of where I live uh, differently. And so I got into how do you do with modern digital cameras, they take color pictures and you have to convert them later for the most part, uh, that whole technical process. So those pictures sent me down the road of doing black and white, those series. And there's three or four of them, I think. Um, and uh, at the same time, I had this memory of what wedding photography, what the fun part of doing wedding photography was, which was the reception, the party afterwards, uh, the pre-getting ready pictures, the formal pictures uh, where you have real photographers. I, I always found them strenuous and not very uh, um, exciting uh, to do. A great photographer would be different. I'm not a great photographer. Um, so in any case, the, the series that I'm doing now came from my desire to find that fun part, the wedding reception, the, uh, the great party, the, the photojournalistic part that Cartier Bresson did so beautifully. Um, and combine it somehow with uh, this sort of newfound technology of mine of uh, conversion and manipulation within the black and white uh, realm. Um, so a couple of years ago, I went through uh, some of my old photographs that I had done pro bono work, and there was a class that I had photographed over uh, half a year, maybe longer, that was a Shakespeare. Uh, it was a class taught uh, where the kids were doing a Shakespeare play. In this mm. case, it was Twelfth Night. And it was, um, it was a uh, group run by a friend of mine, and I sort of offered to, to document it. And it was a, a lot of fun, but the results were really mixed from the way I saw it. Um, and the reason I, I, I realized, what's this, five, seven years later, it was um, if you're photographing a bunch of kids in a room, there's going to be lots of color, <laughs> and the color is going to be overwhelming in what, uh, in terms of fo a photographic series. You see almost no consistency 
day to day what the kids wear. I've spent a whole day once photographing just their socks because <laughs> it's, it's, they were so much fun. Uh -huh. But the result was a body of pictures that only they liked. No one else would be interested in them. They weren't very interesting. So I, I pulled a bunch of those and did some of the conversion manipulation process to black and white and was stunned that if you extract the color, you focus the eye on the, what, what's happening, what the emotive aspect of what's happening. And the, the series was quite lovely. So I went to a friend of mine and said, um, where can I, a friend of mine who happens to be the executive director of Portland Public Media TV, um, Bill Humphreys, and said, um, where can I find these kinds of, of environments where I can go in and capture it going? And he said, how about actors and plays and stuff? He put me uh, in contact with several producers and directors in the Portsmouth area, um, and I've done one, two, three plays in their development, and those are all in the backstage process. And um, to um, Jazz Night, which was uh, a professional jazz musicians rehearsing, which was um, a little less successful, and I'm doing one now, which is the Portsmouth Symphony uh, Orchestra's outreach program for kids. It's not in their kids there. Youth. Seven years old, 17 years old, mm -hmm. 19 years old. Yeah. And that's a little better than the jazz musicians. These are all, the jazz musicians are all professionals and they are very serious and their, their interaction is <clears throat> through the ear, not through the, not visually. So, you know, I noticed, uh, but I noticed the uh, uh, several photographs of, of the jazz musicians and we've actually had a couple of them on the show, uh -huh. uh, Nick Faneuf and Chris Claxton have both been on the creators, and uh, you know I saw them among the the various photos that you had of. Uh, it, it's a small community out there, both yeah. both in terms of musical and uh, community and and um, um, plays and actors uh, and directors, and yeah. um, it's it's rare that I go in and show those pictures to anybody and they don't recognize somebody in the Portsmouth you know, area. Well, the, the thing is, you know, especially, um, well, I guess it's fair to say this about uh, any of the, the jazz musicians that you photograph there. They are, as you said, they're serious about it and they're really trying to make an effort to to kind of keep live jazz music alive in the Portsmouth area. So. I, I yeah, I admire and that, but they. I I would love to do more, um, of that, but it it doesn't lend itself to the rehearsal side because jazz has a lot, at least the jazz that I like, has a lot of improvisation in it. So the action is really in the bars and in the, in the pubs and the like where they perform. And um, sure. I haven't explored that yet. Um, yeah. The actors are seducing me regularly with their their. Wonderful interactions and, and the way they they think. I've learned a lot about acting and about how performances are um, created by doing this project. And that was actually kind of a sub goal of mine is to learn what it's like. I mean, I've spent, spent my entire career in high tech research and development. Uh, labs and, and the like, as, both as an individual contributor and as a manager. So the arts are uh, a wonderful new experience for me, which is a great thing to, to do. I want to go back just for a minute to uh, when you were talking about you know, taking the color out of uh, some of these photographs and, and what that routinely will do to for mm -hmm. the viewer. Um, I found it really interesting and kind of unexpected when I went to your website and, and opened up the uh, the page with the coastal shots, for example, mm -hmm. uh, to see you know these beautiful waves and the beautiful sort of seascape uh, along the beach there, and it's in black and white, which is really quite unusual. You know, when you think about most people, 
oh. uh, including uh, professional photographers. You know, they'll take a picture at the beach and it's going to be in color and, yep. you know, doesn't it look lovely? Uh, but uh, it was actually a, a nice surprise and really, as, as you kind of suggested, made me really take a, a closer look at everything that's in the photo. <laughs> what you're seeing. Um, the, the conversion process is a discovery process. Sometimes you convert and you, what you see is, is totally unappealing and uninteresting. Um, what, I first, what, what I noticed first in that process when I was converting some of those um, were the clouds. Mm, because yeah. the clouds um, uh, and the sky are so different color-wise that your eye is drawn in a color photograph to the blue skies. Uh, when you drop out that blue, you suddenly see these incredible natural uh, things happening that you, you don't even notice when you're there. Um, there's a photographer, an astounding photographer, um, Mitch... Do Browner, Do Browner, um, who does um, landscape work exclusively, and does he's a storm chaser, uh -huh. and um, he's also does um, amazing western landscapes too. But his storm chasing is what brought his, him to the attention of the art world. And I really recommend if you want to be awed by a photograph, a simple black and white photograph, you see that. And um, he says that he thinks in terms of black and white. He doesn't see things in color. In fact, he, hmm. one of the things he can do because he shoots a, a digital camera is turn off the color. So when he's actually looking in his viewfinder, he's seeing a black and white picture. But he also thinks that way. And he's another guy who came late to the party. He was not a photographer till not a full time photographer until a few years ago. Uh -huh. And came back to it. And and for you, when when was late to the party? When did you really start to get into the the photography that we see on your website now? Oh, that's maybe uh, five years ago, uh, seven years ago. Um, I. Um, I retired out of the high-tech industry. We moved to from the West Coast to the East Coast. My wife was a um, was and is um, a designer, interior designer. And um, at the time we moved, she was also a field editor for a major magazine series, which means she was a scout. And um, she's a, a profoundly bad photographer. And as a scout, you have to go out and um, Find, find interesting places for magazines to write stories about and uh, write up what's interesting about them and take reasonably decent pictures of it. And so I started doing that for her, found myself becoming the scout, writing the stories. And she was, she's uh, an exceptionally good uh, hunter-gatherer. And so she would find the places and then sort of turn me loose on it. Somewhere in that process, the designers whose projects I started photographing, one of them asked me to photograph her daughter's wedding, and that was something I felt incapable about uh, to do. So I'm fortunate to have a daughter who's a professional photographer and has been for some several decades. And so I had her come up and we shot it together and then for Five years, I guess, I or more, I did wedding photography, and um, eventually got tired of the drama that's associated with it, <laughs> and that's not the positive form of the word, and um, began to do this work. So that's a long version of how I stepped from that to this, and in that route, it was all it was digital that helped me make those steps. I was going to ask about that. So it's, it's been primarily, if not exclusively, digital? Yeah. Uh, like a lot of people, I've always had a camera around. And in college, I was it was how I earned my beer money. Uh, but, <laughs> the, uh, but um, yeah, it's a real release to have no, um, no worry about how many shots you took. 
and it also allows people who aren't uh, skilled like really good photographers are, which I don't count myself as one, uh, to participate in the visual processes. Um, it also has made everybody a photographer. I mean, some of the stuff that's in my portfolio is um, cell phone stuff. Uh, and the modern cell phone is a, is a very competent uh, camera. Um, so the bar on um, professional photographers just moved up dramatically uh, because there are now instead of hundreds of thousands of photographers, there are billions of photographers out there. That's true. Yeah. Which, so for uh, uh, people out there who might be interested in uh, uh, what an excellent photographer uh, uses or prefers for these various gadgets, uh, <laughs> what what type of smartphone do you prefer for uh, taking oh, well, photographs? I'm, I think um, it's interesting. I, I happen to have a um, a uh, Samsung. Um, but the Apple products are, are delightful, and both companies, Apple and Samsung, are and others, um, are um, driving um, photography away from being even sensors and lenses into uh, post-processing artificial intelligence applications that they can bring to the cell phone to make it um, do things that you wouldn't think uh, a machine could do. And a, mm. a modern cell phone, if you tell it to, it will only focus on f the faces it sees. And um, soon it will only focus on the face that you tell it to focus on. For example, if you were taking a picture of your kids and they were in a playground with other kids, you could tell your phone, I can do that with my, my digital camera, you can essentially tell it to only focus on that kid. And no matter where that kid goes, it will track that kid through facial recognition. So, amazing. So the bar on being a great kid photographer just went up. Yeah. When you, everybody's cell phone could do that. Right. It's <laughs> really incredible. Um, how about cameras? Do you have one particular camera that you go to, or you have well, I, a few different ones? I, I, um, I was on the the uh, the camera. Um, what do you call it? Um, escalator at, when digital came in, and I guess I've moved from three megapixels or four mega. You probably know better than I. Um, um, to um, now a Sony forty-two megapixel camera, and I think. We were talking earlier. I, but two years ago, I said, "Well, I, I, I'm going through cameras so fast, even though they're all Sony cameras, that I'm not learning what the camera can do." So I stopped, uh, got off the merry-go-round, bought two of what I thought was the best camera for me, which was a Sony high-megapixel mirrorless camera, and stopped buying and paying attention to them. So. Mm. I still lust after gear like everybody, but. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, I, I, I get that. Um, so for people uh, who would like to see your work in addition to your website, which is danderby.com, right? Danderby.com, absolutely. Um, do you have uh, exhibits locally or? Uh, no, and I haven't actually, I haven't gone there yet. And the reason for that is that um, I think of a, of these series as a series of products that I'm creating because I was a, trained as a product designer. And so um, while I'm still shooting um, series, I'm pushing myself into the printing process. So I'm trying to learn how to do fun art prints. And um, once I'm satisfied that I have a, a portfolio of prints that people would want to see, then I'll, I'll explore that. But I've done no exhibits. Oh, well, I have two in a, an exhibit in Exeter, but there's a lot of fine photography being shown in that exhibit. That's the New Hampshire um, Society of Photographic Artists, which I just joined, and that you've had the president of in here talking about their project.
That's right, Mike Sterling. Mike Sterling. Yeah. Well, um, so what uh, what can people look forward to uh, in addition to hopefully some uh, some fine prints uh, coming out in in the future? Uh, well, that uh, I, one thing I'm doing with this project is not pl over planning it. So uh, I am currently doing. Um, a, the, a, uh, and there's nothing on the, my website for it. Um, uh, a shoot, a s part of this backstage backstory series of, with the Portland, Portsmouth um, Symphony Orchestra's outreach for kids. And um, that is one that I have, um, uh, I have all the releases signed. Well, and when you're doing uh, young people, you need to be careful that their family understands what you're doing and why you're doing it and have okayed it. Um, but um, one of the things that's come up and, and we may explore is that the uh, executive directors of both the West End Theater and uh, the Portsmouth Public Television, Portsmouth Public Media TV, um, and I have sat down and talked about doing a Ken Burns-like series of on the um, the creative process in the theater, mm -hmm. and so we've um, uh, done one pass at pl applying for a, a, um, a grant to fund the work that has to be done in addition to the photographs, but it would be um, uh, essentially a kind of Ken Burnsian. Um, what do you call that? A video, a, <laughs> a documentary. documentary. Yeah, yeah. But a yeah. documentary focused on more the the art than the science of, of their process, theater theatrical process. So that's in not so much in the works, but it is one that's under discussion. Well, I hope that works out. It sounds very sounds, interesting. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on The Creators today and talking with us. It's my pleasure. Yeah. That's it for this episode of The Creators, coming to you from some city, as always, in beautiful downtown Summersworth. Uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, if you will, and uh, please subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.